our last day of the prophet Jeremiah, leading up to this new covenant. Imagine being in love with someone where in the love, there is no self-interest. It's harder to imagine than I think what we give credit for. Because I think in all relationships and all loves that we have, there's always that element of we're seeking some sort of also self-satisfaction for us. But in the love of the Trinity, there is no such love. And so this new covenant that Jeremiah talks about, he doesn't know exactly what this looks like, but we do. Looking back now on the person of Jesus Christ, we know what this new covenant looks like. It's it's the son taking on our humanity. And then again, the son with no self-interest, no selfishness, completely laying everything down towards the other, first and foremost, to, to God the Father, where that love that existed before the foundation of the world existed. And it's in that love in which we're created, and it's in that love in which we're, re- we're redeemed, a love, again, where there is absolutely no element of selfishness or self-interest involved. It's all about giving one's life over to the other for the sake of the other. It's a love that we wish and long and desire to have in life. And in the new covenant, we can start to partake in that, again, in the spirit. Every time we go to the mass, we hear those words in which we desire for, where God says, take this, eat of it. This is my body. This is completely my body. This is the covenant that we are now in with God. But for that new covenant to be possible, God also what he commissioned, he ordained men to be priests. And so that leads us to today's feast day, St. John Vianney. Now, I apologize because there's so much that I want to say about St. John Vianney that I might be all over the place. So I'm going to try to keep it as clear and as coherent and concise as possible. But first, you have to know a little bit about how the saint grew up. The saint grew up as a young boy during the French Revolution. Now, do you know what that means? The French Revolution was a time where not only was the monarchy overthrown, but literally churches were shut down. It was illegal to have mass. It was illegal to be Catholic. In fact, when St. John Vanney was a little boy, he received his first communion in someone's kitchen. And so he grew up with priests who decided to stick with it, priests who went underground. He saw these men as heroes, you know? He saw a lot of heroic virtues. But, you know, we can relate <laughs> Sometimes we look at history and we can't imagine what it would have been like to live during a period like this, but we already have lived through it. There were times where we couldn't get to Mass. And even in some places, it was illegal to have Mass. But because of that experience, when St. John Vanney grew up, in fact, when he wanted to become a priest, first of all, he struggled in his academic studies. That's why he's one of my heroes, okay? (laughs) You know? Literally, he needed a priest to vouch to the bishop for him that, that, he, that he's worth being ordained, that he can do it. And thank God the bishop listened to him. But his first assignment, his nickname is the Cure of Ars, which just in French means the parish priest of Ars, France, A-R-S. It's a, a little town in France somewhere. I don't know where it is, but uh, you know, it's a small country. Uh, but... Uh, You know, when he gets sent there, the bishop tells him that the people there know very little of God. Again, because of the French Revolution, because of people not being able to get the mass, many of them, yeah, might know something of God and of the Catholic faith, but they really don't. Again, I think a situation I think we can easily relate to. And so he sends in there, and his parish plan was a strategic strategy of marketing and 
social media now, it was none of that. His pastoral plan was very simple. First of all, he had the love of the Eucharistic Jesus. Spent hours in adoration. In fact, there's a story where when he first got into, the, into his church and the people were looking for him, they wanted to meet the new pastor. They found him in the church, just sitting there silently praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament. They came out and they told the townspeople that this one is different. This one is different. And the second was his devotion to penance and to the sacrament of reconciliation. He wanted the people to come to know not only of this, again, this selfless love of the new covenant, the selfless love of God, but also very much attached to it is God's divine mercy. And so I'm sure you know and familiar with the saint and the hours that he spent in confession. Uh, People flocked eventually from all over France and maybe even all over Europe, flocked to see this simple little priest from Mars uh, and, uh, and have him hear his confession. And then finally, a Marian devotion. Marian devotion. You know, he says that the priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. That's what being a priest is. That's what I try to, not always faithful, but what does that mean, love of the heart of Jesus? To love the things that Jesus loved. Not only to embrace his heart, but to love what Jesus loves. What does Jesus love? Not only does he love saints, he loves sinners. Jesus also loved his blessed mother. Loved her deeply. Those, seem, those see, uh, three little simple things. Eucharistic adoration, confession, and marrying devotions. I promise you, very soon, we'll be doing a lot more of these things. Because, again, I see our simulation here in America is that the same as it was in France after the Revolution. People who, who forgot the love of God in their lives and what that means. People who forgot that the, 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 the secret to life is to not to be self-consumed with things, but to be self-given. That love and true love is not seeking one's own interest and one's own satisfaction, but true love is to seek the good of the other for the sake of the other. God is the fulfillment and completeness of that because he is the source of that love because that's who he is. St. John Vianney, love the heart of Jesus. Hopefully myself as a priest will do the same, but I think it can also apply to you. Fall in love through the prayers of St. John Vianney into the heart of Jesus. May God bless you.